at it. All right, let's do it. Um, so sounds good. I assume now, um, Let's see. So we have interest. We have the futures dropping. I guess they were up overnight. Um, but hey, what are we going to do? I don't know. This thing just swings back and forth every day. So it is what it is. So why don't we just get into the stories that I want to talk about today? And first one is, of course, jobs. So right off the rip, we have the jobs numbers came out at 830 this morning. And we have um, finally, I mean, we've gone under 700,000. Uh, jobless claims for the first time since I think I think a month ago we started and it, it's just nuts out there. So that's a great thing. Um, and then continuing claims have also dropped. So let's see what is going to happen. I don't know what's going on right now. Hold on a second. Let me close my epic pen. I think it's uh, messed everything up on me. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so, um, but this is the fifth straight week that we've been below 800,000 jobless claims, which is pretty wonderful. So maybe we are getting back to, I don't know, quote unquote, normal, whatever they want to call it. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but we have to remember, I think it's very important to remember that the 20, like before this pandemic started and everything, we were just up over 200,000 a week. So there's a long way to go. Um, let me see what else the treasury okay secretary janet yellen who used to be chairman of the fed came out and she, she said we should be clear-eyed about the hole we're digging out of okay um this is something that got me with the increased pace of the covid vaccine federal stimulus spending spending winter gripe easing across much of the country it is quite reasonable to harbor up expectation for the economy so i do agree that that's true with the vaccine stuff, um, I don't know, I guess it, I, it comes down to, I think at this point, now that the vaccines are out, we're going to have enough for every American to get the vaccine by May 1st, from what I understand. Now, I guess it comes down to, are people going to take the vaccine? Um, I guess that's the important question to ask at this point, not are there enough vaccines, because we already know there's enough vaccines. So I guess that'll 
maybe uh, that's a question to ask. Federal stimulus spending, right now it's over $12 trillion. So um, that's pretty dope. Next, let's go to what Jerome Powell said. And I found myself basically highlighting this entire article because I just literally couldn't believe what I was seeing. So in, in this first part, he's talking about, I don't I'm sure some of you guys are history buffs out there. He's referring to this Dunkirk guy from back in the day in some war, World War II, okay. When it's time to get in the boats and get the people, you don't do any inspection, you just get in the boats. And that's basically what they did. And he said he thinks it was an overall very successful program. So just throwing money at things is, an over, is a good successful program. I, I read on, uh, today's Thursday, maybe it was Monday, but I think it was Sunday. Nike had the biggest increase in, oh, thanks Reed, good job. So Nike had the biggest increase in sneaker purchases over the past decade or something after this last round of stimulus checks came out. I have two friends that don't need the money. They bought PlayStation 5s, um, whatever. That's how, that's how today's market goes. But I, my point is, I think the spending is a little bit out of control at this point. And I've, I've already heard that they're, they're here, right here. Fed chief said that there's a fresh round of fiscal stimulus from Congress will support hiring and broad economic activity as the economy continues to open. So we're, we are at um, 12, over 12 trillion and more to come. So good. Um, let's see, Paul said, he said that the economic increase is improving. We come down to that vaccine outlook again. Pa but Powell clarified that the Fed is not going to immediately pull its monetary policy. And he said that last week. He said they're not going to change anything. They're going to do it over time. Rates are expected to stay at 0% uh, through the end of 2023. And they don't inspect inflation to get to 2%. And I'm, they're doing whatever they can to control this. Um, I also found coming down here interesting. The, the Fed has expanded the balance sheet by over $3 trillion as it pumped money into our economy. He did say, uh, which I'm happy about, that this amount of debt is unsustainable. But he also said the government should have no issue being able to service its debt now or for the foreseeable future. Um, I guess when you just keep spending, I, I, I'm sure years ago it just stopped mattering. He added that until the economy is back, to full employment and taxes are rolling back in, the government can address the national debt. But until then, the time is not now. So it hasn't been the time since um, President Bush was in office. I mean, the spending kind of started there and it's just spiraled out of control. I, I, I just don't know how they can keep doing this. And um, at some point, I don't, I think, I mean, this is modern, modern monetary policy, so. Okay, I'm coming into these SPACs. So the SEC, I talked about it last week, I think. The SEC is finally cracking down on these SPACs and they're kind of going and starting to probe into what's happening there. And they're looking at deal fees, volumes, internal controls, um, and compliance issues. So what I need, to, so this is very important that I want you guys to know. I don't invest in IPOs. I definitely don't do these kind of things. See, the idea of these SPACs is they raise money for companies to through initial public offerings, and then they try to use those funds to acquire other privately held companies and create, um, nice. Paul just brought, brought some shirts into my office from FitActive Sports, which is a partner of Crossroads Group. They're awesome. Um, so Nicola was a SPAC, DraftKings was a SPAC. And then A-Rod, I know, so right here, I have A-Rod's name highlighted. A-Rod is supposed to do, um, um, what do you call it? He's going to do 31 SPACs, I think, between 2020 and 2021. It's just incredible. Uh, my mom came on and she said, thanks for the generous donation. My mom's president of that uh, board down there where I donated the money. So also, I, I made, um, so thanks, mom. Um, getting off topic for a second, I made... A lot of money on Cardinal Health uh, with an investment that I did with the, the Bid and Ask Nation, a trade that I did with them. So I'm going to take a portion of that and donate it to some charity. You guys decide what you want. Um, and you guys in the Discord, 
tell me where you want me to donate the money and I'll do it if I if I like it I typically like to do small kind of things I don't mind helping out individual people I do not like really donating to big charities because of the corruption but um we'll talk all right um that's enough for specs I mean just be careful with these guys when you invest they are not the most ideal situation so all right let's do um I want to see what Ray Dalio says so Ray Dalio is uh, the head of the largest hedge fund in the world, Bridgewater Capital, $150 billion. Um, I used to really like him a lot until he said cash is trash right before the um, big crash in the pandemic. So, but what he's saying and the title of this is that he's a good probability that uh, Bitcoin gets outlawed. And when I first saw the story, I was like, okay, I don't know about this. And then I saw, uh, then I started reading and I was like, okay, maybe. So he thinks that there's a good probability that can be outlawed similar to when the US government made it illegal to privately own gold. And I started thinking about this, then I started thinking about prohibition. I mean, things, things have happened where the government has outlawed different things. I know it was very different times. And <laughs> Gary, you donate to my portfolio, I like that. Um, so he points out, oh, so I guess he's coming out with a new book. His last book, it was called uh, Principles. Very good book. Um, he, I mean, he's good. He's good. I just, I have not been agreeing with a lot of what he's been saying. He really knows a lot about China and China's economy. He spent a lot of time there. His son spent a lot of time there. I'm not sure if it's the one that passed away or not, but um, either way, it's sad. So the Gold Reserve Act of 1934 made it illegal for individuals to own gold because the government leaders didn't want to, there to be a competing, um, they didn't want any competition. And also when, when big countries, they don't want competing money. So unless they can figure out how to regulate and have a stronghold on Bitcoin, maybe Dalio has a point here. Um, I mean, he, the guy knows history. Already India has been trying to outlaw Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrencies. So let's see, um, he, makes, he makes another good point though. About, Dahlia makes a good point. Bitcoin has proven itself over the last decade. It hasn't been hacked. It has worked for purchasing things. I mean, you, it just came out that you could buy a Tesla with, uh, with Bitcoin. Imagine buying Bitcoin in 2017 or whatever, I think it was at 4,000 bucks. And say you bought two coins, and now you can go buy a $135,000 Tesla or something. Just crazy. All right. Before I get, I want two, two more stories before I get going. And I want to talk about tech. So tech, Llewellyn, Bitcoin is down today, but it had a, I, I think I heard it had a big gap up yesterday when, um, when um, Tesla said that they would have it. The Bitcoin simps don't know who Ray Dalio is. <laughs> yeah, if you guys want to know about somebody pretty cool, go look at Ray Dalio. I mean, what he's built from zero has been truly incredible. And he started trading uh, futures commodities. So, um, okay, so tech is in the news. It has been for the last month. The thing that really gets me about this story, well, first of all, this guy says that Facebook is a cheap name. And I, I do believe that Facebook is pretty close to a value play. The thing that does concern me though is can Facebook sustain its growth that it's had for the past 10 or 15 years because the growth has been unbelievable. Um, when we get down here though, so we talk about how there's been marginal gains in the NASDAQ, but I wrote over here the 10 year note. So why for the past month, past five weeks, whatever, the NASDAQ was getting hit very, very hard because of the 10 year note. Let me pull up my thingy. Because of the 10 year note increasing from, or I'm gonna go from the beginning of the month, just for, actually, let's go to last month. Um, let's see, current month. All right, so whatever, 1.45%, that's fine. It increased to 1.74, so, 30 bips, everybody was freaking out. Tech started to fall because they were saying that as the 10 year increases, interest rates will increase, even though the government has, is trying to control them at zero or as close to zero as possible. 
which makes borrowing money for the big tech companies more expensive, which then increases the prices of all of your things. And it's just the spiral effect. The past week or so, 10 days, 10 trading sessions, tech has been coming back. And, I, and the, the interest, let me restart. The treasury yield has been slowly coming down. I mean, here we are 12 bips away from where we were last Friday. Nobody's saying anything. Nobody's, this isn't, the story isn't that it's reversed. So that story's gone On to the next story. My, my point is that you guys, there's always a narrative out there. Just figure out what the narrative is. That was the most ridiculous excuse ever to say that tech stocks are crashing. Is tech wildly overvalued? Yeah, but come on. I mean, this is, uh, there's no consistency out there, but oh well. All right, let's get to your stocks. And um, first of all, I wanna see what the market's doing. Then we'll get to them. All right, futures are down a little bit. And let's go from here. So guys, um, like Seth says, tickle the like button. That would be wonderful. All right, first thing I wanna talk about, did Mo's mom press the like button? There's a good chance that my mom doesn't know how to hit the like button, but she'll probably figure it out. All right, um, first thing I wanna talk about, because this was such a hot topic of conversation last night, was in the, in the Bid and Ask Nation chat, is this Catalyst Pharmaceuticals. And everybody loved it because it, it ran up and then it pulled back big time yesterday. And I said that because we saw this pullback, let's see what it does today. I could see this trend reversing like so. This red line can just go boom like that. So we're gonna see what happens at the open in 15 minutes from now. Um, but we did, we are down today, gap down a little bit today. My mom hit the like button. There you go, thanks mom. Um, somebody pointed out, I think his name was Ben, pretty new. He's in the Bid and Ask Nation, but he pointed out this right here, these two things right here. And that's the tweezer pattern. And I am, he caught it, I didn't catch it. And I was like, okay, I guess I need to go back and watch my own video series because I didn't catch this at all. Tweezer patterns, if you go to the Trading 101 series playlist in the um, Everything Money YouTube playlist, you'll find that tweezers, tweezer patterns, which are candlesticks like this where the price runs up on you and then pulls all the way back. So this thing did look green like that at one point, and then the price pulled back in the day. Same thing happened right here. So that is a tweezer pattern. Typically when you get two candlesticks like that, that have long wicks on them that are tweezer patterns, you get a change in trend, you get a change in direction. And that is exactly what happened. He, he made a great catch. Um, this is something really big to look for. Very good job, Ben. I, um, I'm impressed, especially because you, you're a new person. So let's see, um, we have a good trend right now, but like I said, I think this thing could change this morning. We could see one of these this morning, but let's see. Um, all right, figured you'd love to talk about the GameStop earnings and the refusal to forecast. Um, I, hey, listen, I don't blame them for refusal to forecast. GameStop has been a Innocent, innocent bystander in this. People shorted the stock because they thought that the company was pretty much gonna go under. Uh, they were already in rough shape. They knew they were in rough shape. And all these um, Wall Street bets, minion, Wall Street bets, I think the name is, I don't know, the, the Reddit thing. All these Wall Street kids, people came in and sent the stock soaring. So I don't think that, um, I don't blame GameStop. I think, GameStop is a failing business. They don't have anything to fall back on anymore. I think the people that were talking about the hype of their earnings is just plain stupid, frankly, because what does it matter? All the, just because they're in the news doesn't mean that they make money. I mean, everybody knows the situation they're in. It's, um, yeah, that kind of that kind of irritated me when everyone was talking about GameStop's earnings. Like, they're, like that whole run was based on selling video games or something like that. No, it was based on people seeing that there was a heavily shorted stock and they tried to do something about it. They didn't care what the stock was. It hadn't, it could have been, it could have been anything, but it was a perfect storm. All right, CCL. Rolls Royce has gone down, down. Is that a, that's a foreign company. I can't do that one right now. Um, 
what's my take on CCL? So let's zoom out here. CCL is one of these prime 50 percenters where you have your high, let me change colors. You have your high, you have your low, and then you have that middle range where it just can't get through. So each time that CCL made a run, it just pulled back on you, made a run, pulled back on you. This time it made a pretty good run because this was all, this was all the time that the vaccines were coming out. Still, nobody's going on the boats, nobody's booking cruises, but um, yeah, whatever. So, but we get, we're getting the price pullback. So we're getting that. We are getting, let me zoom in here. We are getting a trend reversal. As you can see, our red line did cross under yellow. So we are in a downtrend now. If you are in this thing long, um, I'll answer your question, Kevin. If you're in this thing long on a chart, you can't be in this anymore. Exit your position. If you're in this for a value play, hey, I think 45, 50 bucks is fine. Um, I was in this for a value play. I bought it at $15. This thing ran up so quickly to $30 that I sold my profits. I took my profits off the table. I still have a position in CCL. I'm going to start building a bigger position in CCL. Um, again, when it gets down into this 21 to, and below range, and um, we'll go from there. So Kevin asked, what was my rule of thumb for getting out of CCL? So I had these two candles right here. When we bumped up there uh, a few weeks ago in February, I was thinking that I wanted to take my profits and run and I didn't. Then we got this pullback. So I knew that because we were out here, because we were testing this 50% rule, I knew that we were getting into that resistance area. And I should have probably taken my profits first time around in this in these two candles, but I didn't. So I just waited patiently and right when it got back up there again, I didn't hesitate. Right when it touched 30 bucks, I said, I'm taking my profits and I'm going because this is the second time that it's hitting that resistance point. There's a good chance that it could have gone up like this, especially with all of the good news and vaccine talks, but it didn't. Um, it came back down as I kind of thought it would. And now it's getting into these moving averages over here, which is going to be very hard for it to get through. So that is why I took profits on it. Um, let's see here. The, can we look at DGX in more detail? Um, everybody's been liking this. Um, I think it's Quest Diagnostics. Oh, good one. Okay. Let's, let's zoom out and just see. Okay. Very good. Um, let's see here. All right. So I like that we're over all of our major moving averages. That is a great sign. I like that we're coming up through the sweet spot, man, kind of like this one. And the reason I'm saying I like this one is I really love all this consistent volume over here. So I'm going to write this down. DGX. Who said that? Uh, Gianni. Thanks. I, I mean, I just haven't um, looked, but I love that we're coming up through the sweet spot like this. We have a great engulfing candlesticks. Now I'm going to pull up the line chart because I just want to see if we have any W formations and we do. So what I look for is these higher lows. Um, I would like to see, I wonder where DGX is going to start this morning. Let's do, um, let's go here, here and see what we got this morning on DGX. Oops, DGX, okay. It is, okay, there's nothing. I'm looking for the, I'm just looking at the extended hours this morning and I don't see anything. It's like, when's their dividend? Their dividend is in April 6th. So yeah, I might, uh, I might do something with this this morning. I like this one, just depending where it goes. I need to get through, you see how, this is yesterday's candlestick right here. Let me zoom in to it for you so you can see it a little bit better. So that was yesterday's candlestick. Basically what it did, it started the morning right here. It went up in price, it went down in price, and then it came back and it just finished right in the middle. So that's what that candlestick means where you just have no movement. So I need, before I do anything with this, I need to jump over 127.17. And to be honest with you, I might wait until it jumps over 128.50, yesterday's high. Um, but that goes back to, buy high, sell higher. So some people like it. People in the bid and ask nation get it. People that are not in the bid and ask nation, you might think I'm a little bit crazy for missing out, but I go for the highest probability of making money 
and that highest probability of making money is to clear this previous high from yesterday. So good one. Let's keep a watch on it. DGX, I like it. Um, good find, whoever did that one. Oh, that's right. Cash, you did say DGX in the chat last night. Um, if we are on digital, should we add? Oh, should you add to DGX on new highs? Absolutely. Yeah. And if you caught this thing, good for you. Good job. It's see here. The Roaring Kitty for CEO of GME. Um, I don't know who that is, but maybe you're talking about Kathy Wood, but I think she would be perfect. Apple, let's look at Apple. Because Apple is one that's coming off the bottom nicely. Um, let's see, let me pull up my candles here and just show you guys how to play this. So Apple's dipping. Apple's coming down towards its 200 day moving average. Um, but I like that we're just kind of on the bottom, just going sideways. So this is a great opportunity for those who, excuse me, want a tracker share. Yeah, exactly. Rob tracker share nation. Good one. So we need just throw a tracker share on. This is a great one. Just let it, let it go sideways for a while. What we're going to see is this red line turning up, crossing over the 32% line. The yellow line will follow like this. Hopefully I'm going to use blue, but we're going to eventually get green candlesticks engulfing like that and we'll be good. So this is a good one for a tracker share if you want. Apple's always a good one to go with. Um, Amgen, that's the other one I wanted to do. Amgen is something that I talked about maybe getting into as a group. I don't like, I don't love the price for purchasing for the masses, but it is what it is. Um, let's see. So I, when I zoom out like this, I always want to check because it's so common to see 50% stocks like I showed you on CCL. I want to see if it's doing that 50% thing. So that's always why I start looking at a zoomed out to your chart. So right now, this is looking very good. We're coming up through 32%. I like it. Our volume is pretty decent. Um, guys, tickle the like button like Seth wants you to. And um, what I really want to see are big and green engulfing candlesticks like that. I want to take out this high of $250. Once we get over $250, you can add to, and look at that, 250.21 is your resistance point. Once you get over 250.21 with some confidence, you can go ahead and add all your heart desires. So Amgen is a good one. I'm going to write that one down. The only reason I don't like that one for a mass play is because it's expensive and some of my minions can't explain it. Or I mean, afford it in mass. I mean, I want, I want you guys to be able to make some money. I don't want you guys to be making a couple of dollars here and there. Uh, yesterday we sold Cardinal Health, I think as a group, we probably made eight, nine thousand, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars as a group. It's really incredible. I, I took all these screenshots of the, um, of the discord and sent them to Seth and I sent them to some friends. I'm just like, I just can't believe that this is actually happening. But, um, so if you want to make money, join, join the bid and ask nation. Let's see discovery. I like this. I like discovery as a, um, value play back in the day. Not anymore. They got a little short squeezed, I think. Ooh. Oh, who, who, who said this discovery? Oh, Bogdan Bogdan loves to short and uh, he's very good at it. I remember his first short was beyond meat. He did very well. So this one, you can't go, you can go short on it on probably a daily chart, like your uh, swing trading. But if you're going to go long, we need this red line down here to cross through 80% for it to be a true downtrend. This is just technically a snapback. So all that's all this is a snapback right now. Um, it could very well turn into more green candles going up and this is just creating a W. But I don't I don't know, I, you're just gonna have to be patient with it. That's all you got to do. You're moving into a lot of your moving averages. So that's not the most ideal situation. But uh, yeah, Bogdan loves shorting. And he's pretty good at it. What do you think of Amgen? I just did Amgen. Avi, uh, Avi. All right, MU. Somebody's been asking about MU a lot. What's the What's the deal here? Let's see. All right, I'm gonna zoom out. Oh, oh wow. So I'm assuming that somebody wants to short MU because this is a good short. You're coming through the sweet spot very nicely. 
you're through your two or your uh, 25 and 50 day, which I like. You got a gap down this morning. Yeah, I mean, if you want to do, um, Avi, I literally did Amgen probably two or three minutes before you got in. So just zoom, just go back and you'll see it. Um, this, if you get an engulfment today, like I want to see that something, something like that today, a red candlestick, you can go ahead and add to your short. Just know that when you're going into your hundred day, it's 76 bucks, take your profits. And if it gets down here to this 200 day, take your profits, make sure you do that. Uh, <laughs> rest in peace, me being late. <laughs> It's okay. Don't worry. It's all recorded. Oh, speaking of recorded, I am doing a shorting, uh, not, not shorting. I'm doing an entire seminar tomorrow at 10 a.m. for patrons only. I'm going to, it'll be um, an hour and a half to two hours. I'm going to go through and kind of teach the, I'm going to start at the basics and build up to the top level. So those of you that have been here for a while, it's probably good to go through the basics again. Like me, I missed that tweezer pattern and you would have seen that. Um, you might have missed it as well. I'm going to be helping the newer people that are in there, people that are thinking of upgrading. So that'll be at 10 a.m. tomorrow and uh, Eastern time. So join the Bid and Ask Nation today and you will have access to it tomorrow. And for those of you that are in the Bid and Ask Nation, it will be recorded. For those of you that are not in the Bid and Ask Nation, it will be recorded, but you won't have access to it. All right, last stock I'm going to do, and then I got to get out of here. Mo only looks at foreign stocks if he is in a good mood. Truth. All right. Actually, I'm in a good mood right now, though. I have, uh, what do I have? Today's, t I, I like Thursdays. Thursdays, my voice is smoked by the end of the day, but I like Thursdays. All right, so we're going along the bottom, just coasting. This is a good tracker share stock. Ooh, yikes. It's trying to break below its 200 day moving average right now, which is, um, man, that's free fall city if it happens. So we'll see what happens, but this is exact. This is just throw a tracker share on and just wait. I mean, worst case scenario, you lose $125 a share. It just, um, it just, it just happens. Why do I not like foreign stocks? Um, it's not that I don't like them. It's that I don't really know them. And there's 10,000 American companies. I just don't understand the point of going and doing foreign stuff. So <laughs> when I was in med school, I had people managing my money for me because I didn't have time. And they were, they had 10% of my portfolio allocated to foreign ETFs. And I, I just said, guys, I do not want that foreign exposure. I don't, I'm, I don't like playing that game. Um, I think that the U.S. dollar is the gold standard for the world, and um, we have the best. I mean, even though our economy is like what it is right now, I still believe we have the best economy in the world. Uh, I just want my money here, so that's the only reason. There's there's really no other reason than that. I'm not opposed to looking at foreign stocks, but also my charts don't have foreign 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 stocks often have lighter volume. They do different things that I don't understand as well. So. That's the only reason. So can I do vibe? All right. This is my last one I'm going to do. And then I got to go vibe. What is vibe? vibe? Oh, I don't have vibe. Must be foreign. All right. So guys, join the Bid and Ask Nation. Come to my class tomorrow. I'm going to be doing this for two hours. I'm not going to take individual stock questions, but you guys will learn how to. My goal is to teach you guys how to do this on your own so that you can confidently do it and um, we'll go from there. So you guys have a great day. I'll see you at one o'clock on the live stream, the big, the big show. And um, that's it. Have a great day. See ya.